I'm really pleased now to welcome Stephanie Bode. She's the Women's Human Rights Country Contact for Germany. She's going to give a presentation update on the work of WHRC in Germany over the past year. So uh, welcome, Stephanie. So I've been the country contact in Germany for 12 months now. And I thought that would be a nice moment to show the gains and the challenges that we, we had in Germany during this last year. And I also will give you an overview on the German situation and maybe uh, you will also get some ideas for activism in your countries. So first of all, I want to give a big thank you to the WHRC headquarter team because they were really very helpful and provided really wonderful advice and other support during this whole year. And um, it was also just lovely to work with them and also to the other um, women that I got to know during this work. Just to give you a picture about our work here, we have a very small group right now. The core group is about five women, but we also have casual meetings every week with sometimes more women. And we try to have uh, break, German breakout rooms after the international webinars. And of course we translated the website and have almost uh, 500 sig signatories. And um, I put a, a one every time when uh, we did something new here in Germany. So that's the, the one here. Um, so we were really the, the first group who focus, focuses on uh, women's sex based rights and who was present with several um, social media channels only about this issue. So as you can see, there's uh, also our web translated uh, country page but on these uh, different social media channels we are present. And uh, we have focused a lot on uh, writing public statements and talking to, uh, as possible, um, well, if it was possible to, to talk to journalists and to politicians and to inform the public. And here I have three um, compliments that we get about our work and uh, um, maybe one, the one from the MP is really the most significant um, and the MP said that we really brought this issue into the German public debate. So that was really nice to hear. Um, and we did, uh, we organized eight public events and that was also very new in Germany. So we really organized the first event on women's sex based rights in Germany. And as you see, uh, we invited Julia Long and also uh, in general, we, we did a mix of more famous feminists and some women who are very new to feminism. And um, here in the bubbles, I put some, some compliments that we got on YouTube. So I'm not going into detail here, uh, just in, in Kleine, many, many of you know already, and um, here is Sheila Jeffries, of course, and who talked about um, the behavior of cross-dressing men, and Bettina, um, who talked about how transgenderism harms lesbians. And this was also an interesting one, um, uh, but as I said, I'm not going into detail right now. Um, I just want to say, it's very important to have these uh, country specific webinars because it provides access to many women who will otherwise not um, get informed. Many like in Germany, especially older women cannot speak very well English or understand it so well. So it really motivated them to get involved into this issue and to learn and also I, we think we, it, it's important to encourage women to speak up and by doing these webinars, it's much uh, easier to facilitate it if it's in your own language. And also what you hear in the media here is very often that this would be a British problem. And of course it's not. So by giving these uh, German webinars, we can show no, this is a German problem as well. And we can really find our own language. For example, the term sex-based rights, we didn't have that in German yet. So um, we, we need to, to create a German language in this issue. So here are, here's Anna talking about, Anna Julia Delisio talking about 
uh, as she called it, the gender di dictatorship in Argentina. And this was about surrogacy with an English speaking woman from France as well. And this was the, the last one where we had um, four women answering all the same questions. And uh, Lydia was maybe a, well, very, very special in this one because she's a mother who who has a daughter who survived the gender cult and she really could um, could motivate other uh, parents in fact to stay strong and and by this to to help their daughters better like to 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 keep a strong standing and not to go along with this uh, gender um, stuff so another important thing of course is writing these statements so we uh, were luckily the the parliament rejected the self id proposal lately and we were um, we we wrote our first statement in i would say in in germany uh, together from from a woman's rights perspective and also we start to criticizing the current uh, gender ID identity law which is called transsexuellen gesetz and we wrote statements about hate speech legislation, which they, they didn't pass yet, and also about other proposals that included gender identity language, and we criticized that uh, terms like, you know, uh, um, pregnant bodies and things like that. And also we were defamed in the press and we, we learned that it's good to right answers on this and I, I will give some ex examples later. And then we also published a petition, petition which you can also sign um, and it is against uh, the self-identification law in Germany which, which is still um, a danger to come because the next government will be will start in fall and the Greens have already announced that they will um, go on pushing it uh, into our legislation. Some more achievements. Um, so in January, we had for the first time in the mainstream media, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, which is a center conservative uh, newspaper. And we had for the first time the women's rights perspective in relation to gender identity ideology in this mainstream paper because before that there were always only criticism from the med medical side side so it was more about you know uh, taking puberty blockers or not and so on but uh, the women's rights perspective was just never mentioned so that was a big win and and also of course we were mentioned as an organization for the first time as well and uh, shortly after emma which is the biggest feminist magazine they mentioned us for the first time. And um, as you see in these two columns, they write very extensively about our organization and also about title um, Article 9 of the Declaration. And this was a win, I would say, as well, because um, I was able to publish a letter uh, which was, was a response to a gender identity doctor in this newspaper, again, the FAZ, and uh, I criticized the, this whole uh, gender um, identity medicine and said it's all an in invention and so on, or that it's um, it's harmful for children and so on. And what was interesting was that I got a handful of emails to my private email account, uh, and they were all very positive. So as you can see, there's a professor of law um, or of archaeology and um, I just want to tell this because uh, women in Germany really think that it's very very dangerous I mean in a way of course you you risk that you get defamed but in another way uh, I didn't get any negative email so it might be much less dangerous as you um, expect and this was an interesting article as well because um, I didn't talk to this journalist, but um, he he told he had been following our Twitter account already long for longer, and he really took 
used our feminist language. So he here he says transgender ideology is totalitarian and misogynistic as the headline. And that is very new that this feminist language is used in this uh, gender identity criticism. And that was a big win as well, because it was in the frame of the debate uh, concerning the self ID proposal and this was for the first time that in the in the mainstream parties um, that a polit politician used the argument of um, that it, it's harmful to women's rights or here he says that um, a lot of women's organizations have been speaking out more lately and saying we are scared we don't want this and um, before that like he he talked about this in a hearing already a year ago but at that time he didn't use the arguments of women's rights activists so he only talked about i mean only it, it was good already so he talked about that it might be harmful the medical procedures and so on but now we are really coming into this debate and as you see also he talked about the british uh, case of um, kira bell which was great and shortly after um, the first time a politician from the Social Democratic Party um, said on her Facebook profile that um, she, she voted against the self ID uh, law and she also explained why she thought it was harmful. Um, so that was really the first time. And I mean, the headline is a bit misleading. Um, uh, it says sexual self-determination, let's talk about it, but she actually means uh, self-ID of gender identity or of sex. Um, and as you see, she got many comments and uh, many sharings. And what's also an interesting information is that she's on the board of the Association Sisters, which promotes, um, which helps women to exit prostitution. And the uh, and Sisters is also a, a signatory of the declaration. And here you see, uh, you probably all heard about this lesbian spring festival, where we also had a virtual, um, virtual stall. We were in the virtual stall. And um, this festival had a very big uh, shit storm. And it was also because we were uh, in this uh, virtual room. And so this shitstorm was also directed to us. And um, as you see here, there are, this is a Berlin newspaper, quite a big one. And we were mentioned in relation to that we are against self-identification of sex. And here is a Berlin-based um, rainbow magazine, I would call it. And uh, it also defamed us as, um, yeah, in, in a very just negative way and also in relation to this uh, self-ID law. And this was a lesbian nationwide magazine and they had a trans rights activist, uh, an interview with him and he, um, he well, said negative things about us as well. But um, they, as the only one, published our counter statement. So this is our counter statement to the things that he said about us. And we have one particular dedicated opponent, I call it, and it's a so-called trans rights organization. They are called DGTI. And um, they did a, they organized an event right after the, the LFT, like the Lesbian Spring Festival. And um, they called it how to continue with the LFT. So, here you see um, these two men are from the organization itself and this is also a man and the rest are women and they the rest are also all gender identity activists and um, here um, yeah they say like him he said he did a lot of research about the radical feminist networks and about the supposed money behind it and they really love to link us to US foundations and to the to the right, of course. 
So here he says um, there's this uh, new website from this women's rights campaign that is Stephanie Boda and Eva Engelken that did not exist before. And I think that is a compliment actually. Um, even though they, they throw everything together, so Eva Engelken is, is not active in our organization, but in, a, in another one. And here, this was a few months before, uh, and they never react on when, when I, in, on behalf of uh, our organization, I write to them and I explain, we are not connected to US foundations or to the right, but they don't care. They, they keep uh, spreading these lies. So here uh, they published on Facebook, uh, storm on the Capitol was yesterday and what comes next? funded with money from US foundations, radical feminists like WHRC are already interfering in German politics to prevent trans-friendly law. So exactly the target group that Trump Jr. addresses. And here just recently they published on their website, um, again, uh, defamation. Um, so they, called, uh, they talk, talk about so-called TERFs such as WHRC and Eva Inken and Stephanie Bode and others. And then they made an FAQ about uh, what these radical feminists are saying, like, you know, men cannot be women and men are a threat to women in, in sex-based only spaces and so on. So, um, yeah, in the end, I just want to um tell some of the challenges that you you are probably all familiar with uh first of all the reactions or non or the actions or non-actions of uh, established women's rights organizations as you see here is one medica mondiale um they do very very good work they work with women in post-conflict or conflict areas like african countries in afghanistan to, ha to help them if they had undergone sexual violence by men and do very important work. But here they say in this Facebook uh, post as well that you know trans women on International Women's Day too and that we should um, yeah, feel responsible for well, the harm that supposedly harm that uh, some men who claim to be women um, experience. And another thing is this, what I call anticipatory obedience. And I mean um, that we have really quite good uh, work protection laws here, but um, because I guess it's because we have heard so much from, from other countries that women lost their jobs and so on, that many, many women are um, behaving as if this uh, would happen here already and it hasn't so far so I don't know of any case um, and um, yeah this I think this is a big problem and also this belief in true transsexualism so the belief that you could define a certain group because of some innate uh, essence by, either biological or psychological essence of transgenderism and then there are other people who would just misuse this or just claim to be transgender but are not real transsexuals and and also you have the same with these laws that uh, they some many feminists think uh, gender identity laws are a good thing for some people but can be misused by others instead of um, really realizing that these laws are just very uh, detrimental to to all of us or are just not a good thing at all and um yeah this is very um big here in feminist circles i would say and also the propaganda by the media and also in schools so i just have an example from the program arte which is a public finance german and um, french program and there they are talking about what they call turf ideology which had uh, spread from the UK to Germany and France. And um, also uh, the existing gender identity laws, uh, for example, we have this uh, very harmful um, ban on conversion therapy of gender identity. Um, and also uh, what many don't know is that the, the um, 
justification of the high court that led to the third option for people with BSD, um, it also included gender identity. So it was a woman or a female uh, who had Turner syndrome who went to the court and she said she doesn't feel like either of the two sexes. And then the court said, okay, then you can, we need this third option. And they justified it, as I said, with gender identity. And also they state that sex would equal gender identity. And they state that um, sex is not only a bi it's not only the result of biological characteristics, but also has other characteristics. And um, so I'm coming to the end now. The, our plans are that we we go more into the public, and uh, we will have our first small protest uh, where we spread flyers in Cologne in July. So if any any one of you want to join us it's female only but you're very welcome to come and we want to have more in in real life meetings and protests and we also want to deconstruct the true trans narrative thank you and if you're watching us on youtube and want to get in touch um there's a button on the women's declaration.com page called countries and then if you click on the Germany page you'll be able to send an email to the country contact Stephanie or um, send it to info at women's declaration.com and we'll pass it on.